Hello everyone, I'm Lauren and welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie. With the exception of Neon Tetras, Bettas and possibly Guppies, there are few fish more easily recognised by aquarists than the Harlequin Rasbora. They have been hugely popular in the hobby since their discovery back in the 1900s, thanks to their small size, easygoing nature and lovely pink coloration, which actually isn't all that common in aquariums. But what are Harlequins like to keep and what kind of setup do they need? Luckily for hobbyists, harlequins are one of the easiest species to keep as they hail from a wide area covering much of Southeast Asia, all the way through Malaysia and Thailand. There they inhabit shallow, slow-flowing water that often runs through wooded and swampy areas, and so their home habitat tends to be boggy and prone to periods of both stagnation and flooding. Because of this, harlequins have adapted to withstand a huge range of difficult water conditions such as poor aeration, temperature fluctuations and inadequate ammonia filtration. For this reason, they are often referred to as a beginner fish by aquarists. They are a species that will forgive you for making mistakes with their tank if it hasn't been set up properly. That certainly doesn't mean you can neglect your fish, and they will thrive in a well-kept, clean and stable environment. But if you happen to forget to put the filter back on after you've cleaned it, or maybe you've added the fish a little bit too early because you didn't really know much about cycling just yet, then harlequins will forgive you, they are not going to drop dead overnight as other species can. In fact, harlequins are really quite robust, and they will tolerate temperatures as low as 15 or 16 degrees, so long as it's for short periods of time. But ultimately they are a true tropical species, and so should be kept in a tank between 22 and 28 degrees, with a pH between 6 and 8. Although if you are looking to breed your fish, then they will want that water to be a little bit more on the acidic side, around 6.5. Again, being from such a diverse range of habitats, harlequins are perfectly at home in a wide range of different setups. They are brave and outgoing little fish, even in the very brightest of lights, and in dimmer lighting so long as there's some cover for them, such as a decoration or two, or maybe some plants. So long as there's some form of cover in there for them that they can dash to in case they feel threatened, then for the most part you will see them schooling around in the open. It is worth bearing in mind that they are only little fish though, and so in a completely bare tank they're going to be much more skittish unless they're being kept in very high density numbers, the sort of density you'd see in a pet shop for example. But in the normal home aquarium, then they'd like to know that there is somewhere they can dart to just in case danger happens to come along. Another appeal of the harlequin for beginner fish keepers is their ever-moving, ever-swimming habit. They are always on the move, but not in that mad, hectic Danio fashion that always needs to be everywhere at once, nor are they floppy, fluttery guppies always falling about the place. Rasboras are chill fish, lazily sculling from one area of the tank to the next, tending to stick around the upper and middle zones. Though don't let that apparent idleness fool you, harlequins are fast when they want to be. They have strongly forked tails that are remarkably powerful, rather like tiny little pink tuna fish. They can really rock it to the surface when they see that food has arrived, for example. In fact, they are notorious little jumpers, and so if you're going to be keeping yours in an open top tank, you will need to keep that water level at least one inch below the rim of the tank and preferably block off the corners as well with a strip of plastic, just because these are the most common jumping sites. Mostly though, harlequin rasboras are perfect for a relaxed atmosphere in a tank. They very rarely fight or display to each other, apart from anything more than a bit of fin flaring, and they will live perfectly happily in any ratio of the sexes, so long as they are in a reasonable group of at least six individuals, as they are a true shoaling species and they like to stick together. Now, harlequins are certainly a small fish, though they have been noted to grow up to 5 centimetres in length. Personally, I have never seen a harlequin come even close to this. My fish are about 3 years old now, and they stopped growing pretty much as soon as they reached about 3 centimetres in length. And that's the same for every other adult harlequin I've ever seen, to be honest. And that's regardless of what size of tank they've been kept in. So, it might be that different strains grow larger, but 3 centimetres seems to be the average to me. Males are more brightly coloured and they have that very striking pink coloration and that lovely deep black wedge on the tail. 
Females, on the other hand, are slightly more subdued in colour, with a more orange sheen to them rather than the pink, and they are considerably fatter than the males as well. In fact, in breeding condition and just after a meal, female harlequins can look remarkably square-shaped, with this big, deep barrel chest and a very pointy little face. In terms of their behaviour though, both males and females are exactly alike. Both are perfectly peaceful and show no interest at all in any other inhabitants in the tank. One of the fascinating aspects of owning harlequins is their breeding behaviour, as unlike many other small species, rasboras, tetras, anything like that, harlequins are actually egg layers rather than egg scatterers. What this means is that the females will carefully select a site for their eggs, usually the underside of a nice broad leaf, and then they will lay them there in the hope that they're going to be safe from predators, rather than doing the scattering variety, which is to just chuck your eggs into moss and hope that they survive. And so once the female has selected the leaf of her choice and she's started to lay, she will entice the male over to come and fertilise those eggs. Being on the underside of a leaf as well seems to stop them from drawing the attention of adult harlequins, and the eggs will be perfectly safe until they hatch. As soon as they do so, unfortunately, things will change, and those little wigglers will attract the attention of the adult fish, and so they will get eaten. So once they've been laid, you've basically got about two days to remove the adults, otherwise they're going to scoff all of their own brood. Luckily though, it's not only fry that the adults like to eat, and they are perfectly greedy little fish and will happily consume anything that fits in their mouths, including flakes, bloodworm, brine shrimps, pellets, any live food that's small enough. And despite their small size, harlequins are really quite feisty feeders and have no trouble at all getting enough food, even in a community tank. Using their speed to their advantage, they will snatch food away before any of the larger fish can get it. They very rarely scavenge from the bottom of the tank though, so it's worth being aware that if you're using a rapidly sinking food, it may move beyond their reach before they get a bite. Overall though, the Harlequin Rasbora's easygoing nature makes them perfect fish, both for beginners, scared of making mistakes that could fatally harm their new pets, and for experienced aquarists looking for a nice, active, but peaceful species to go into a new aquascape. Harlequins are both forgiving and fascinating to keep, and they're really cheap to get hold of as well. There aren't very many pet shops that aren't going to stock harlequins. Anywho though, I hope you've enjoyed this little video all about the harlequin rasbora. Happy fish keeping everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye!